so and here, here's the story with that truck. A lot of people, I, I've never talked about this and I gotta be careful with what I say. The original name of the channel was like Street Warriors. I, I can't remember what it was, something Warriors. It was something really corny. The channel is my my baby and I'll, I'm gonna try as hard as I can at yeah. it. But I, I had to hand it off to her. I had to go full race mode. And that's what happens when I can I can do, I can get to the finals with freaking Frank at the pad. Like, you know, Jimmy Dale's a lot of things, but he is let, smart. Let me stop you right there. That thing has a five gallon fuel cell. Exactly. But if it fits, it ships. It fits and it ships. My dad's gonna hate this, but sometimes you learn it and sometimes you're just born with it. I'd be like me and Billy. I don't mean to like blow air up my own ass or nothing, but. We're pretty good at driving right out of the box somehow. It's It really does take a team. That's like the theme of the episode is it takes a team. All right, guys, we are in the middle of our ultimate rear end housing giveaway. So from now until March 1st, every dollar that you spend on our website for apparel and merchandise gets you entered in to win one of these things. Every dollar you spend from now until March 1st will get you entered in to win this, a straight center section, axles, and the hot boy brakes. So let's get back to the live action. So this is, I don't know what episode we're in, probably doesn't matter, All but right. um, you know, you know, I'm gonna speak for Ricky here and you know, the rest of them are just gonna have to be mad. You're our favorite Hoskinson, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess I'm a little biased, but I get yeah. to nerd out with you. Uh, yeah. I try to stay on everybody's good side. I mean, I, I try to be nice. I treat people like I wanna be treated most of the time and I try not to have any grudges, I guess. I really never get into um, to uh, internet fights or anything. I never. I, I really don't comment a lot on personally. Well, right? normally I'm just trying to drag my family out of yeah, the fights. But somebody said something about you one time. It was, wasn't that long ago, um, and man, that was the closest I've ever been to comment on something. <laughs> I was like, man, you can't pick on Tommy, dude. Like, Tommy's yeah. the best. <laughs> Luckily, normally, a lot of people uh, do defend me when somebody says something out of line. And it's better that I just probably don't say anything. There's a lot of times I type out a response, and I'm like, you know what? This isn't doing anything. Like, I might as well not even say anything. But sometimes I have said things, and I really should just leave it alone. It's the internet. But. Yeah. No, I the, well, that's one of uh one of my mentors in life, he's he just a great dude. He's a drag racer. Uh, but he always says that, like, you know, you he's like, people def people will jump in for you, you know, and, and he's right, you know, but but yeah, man, you're such an incredible human being. We, I like, Thank I you, love man. having a relationship with you. I think you're I feel awesome. the same way about you, man. So, yeah, you make every time I see you at the racetrack, I get excited. So, it makes me happy. I, me and my dad and brother always sometimes talk about this, like. We have like a top 10 list of just special people. Like they're just God sent people. Like they're angels. And like you're on that list. Oh, like, thanks, man. Like CJ is on that list. Like people that just wouldn't hurt a fly. You know, you're on that list for thanks, us. Thanks, man. You're just, you're an important person to us. And I've got nothing against you, man. You're just, you're God sent. No, oh, thanks, dude. No, I, I love like, I love being friends with you guys and, and watching you guys grow. And I think like, you know, with your brother, like, you know, he was like, we were just starting out and he was like, honestly, what most people thought was an annoying kid with the camera and people made fun of him. And, you know, like he just kept at it and, you know, he didn't care, which I love that, you know, he does not care about anything. No, he doesn't. I don't Nothing love can, that, man. Not a lot can frazzle him. I frazzled him a few times. Yeah. <laughs> He'll disagree. But <laughs> no, not a lot frazzles him. That's so when you're when you're kids like you did you get any like brawls when you were small? Oh, he bullied me so hard. <laughs> so, like, I'm gonna try not to say like a million times. That's I do that on my podcast a ton. I'm trying I'm trying to get away from it. That I'll tell you, it will help you listening to yourself over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. Is like yeah. see there there it is. Yeah, you really it's hard. you really learn to trim out some of that yeah. stuff. Yeah. yeah, it's all part of the YouTube game, but. Um, when we were little, we always threw the football in the yard. And of course he's four or five years older than me now. And he would get mad if I ever dropped the football. And I don't, he, he, he was mean when we were little, but like <laughs> I was too little. So when, I, when he's 15, I'm 10. Yeah. And so that's a, and that's a big gap at the time. That's a big swing. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, he, he was, he was, but he made me tough. Um, 
I think a lot of people can see it. Like Billy is daddy's boy or whatever, and I'm a little bit of a mama's boy or whatever. Well, I, though, I mean, the food that your mom cooks, I don't blame you, bro. I mean, I'm in. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I think he's always tried to like toughen me up, especially when I was little, like call me the kind of cuss. You, yeah, he you. called me a pussy and yeah. everything. Like he was, he was hard on me, and I'm glad he was because, or else I probably would have grown up all soft. He, like a lot of people say, my generation is a very soft generation. I think a lot of the older crowd, um, they automatically assume my generation is like soft and it's probably right. And you know, it just is what it is. But yeah, he was hard on me when I was little. I, I, I still have never gotten in a fight, like a fist fight with him, but every now and again, we'll like shadow box and like, yeah, he actually hits me hard. And I'm like, damn it. <laughs> he's scrawny. He's got these bony ass knuckles and it hurts. <laughs> But yeah, he he was hard on me when I was little, but I well, don't regret it or nothing. Well, the the two are your are both, uh, you know, now you're adults, right? You're both easy going, so it's not like really if you didn't have a fist fight as a kid, there's no way you're gonna have a fist fight as you get older. Right? Yeah, <laughs> that becomes way way less appealing. I hated him when I was little. I really did. Until he got to about high school, he started having uh, he started having a lot of high school parties. And I actually was, like, better friends with his friends than he was with his friends. Like, I, hang, I hung out with them all the time. Like, I went through all of my party years when he was in high school and I was in, like, sixth grade middle school. And when I hit high school, I didn't – I never partied or anything. I was super lame. Like, I didn't – it's just funny. I, I did everything. I think, I think he wore out my parents, so I had no room to try and even <laughs> – Yeah. Like, my, he had already put my parents through so much hell – like I couldn't, I couldn't have a party phase myself. Like I don't yeah, know. it was already yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I got my party years out of the way when I was in like middle school. It was really weird, but I always hung out. I was even drinking in middle school. Like it was bad, but it's just funny. Like I always, I guess I thought I was going to be outgoing when I got to high school as well. But stuff happens. I'm sure we'll get into it. But yeah, I was pretty shy in high school. Yeah, that's cool. I mean, I mean, you're still like. Obviously, you're still a little bit shy, which that's one of the things yeah. that I really like about you is, like, you really – I can tell, like, when you're at the track, like, or whatever, I run into you, I, like, you're really always analyzing the situation and you, you think through what you're going to say, and which is a great quality, man. It's, it's nothing to be ashamed of in that regard. But Well, there's a reason I was always behind the camera to start out. Like, yeah. I loved the camera stuff. That was, like, my first passion. Um, yes, I, I – Racing and the video stuff are both my biggest passions. When we were little, we did junior dragsters. We started out bracket racing. And uh, I was in 1290 when I was, you know, I don't know, I think I started out like seven or eight years old. Mm. And uh, I was pretty good at it. I was really good, but I didn't like it that much. I mean, I definitely liked it. I just, I, I was always really scared to lose because... I'll be honest, like, my dad was hard on me, too, yeah. and we wanted to win, and I don't know, it's just, there's a lot of, a lot of yelling, <laughs> it, was, it was tough, uh, I, I never wanted, to, I was scared to lose, and, uh, but yeah, I, I was pretty good when I was little, and Billy raced all the way up until 790 class, which nowadays they call it. I don't even know if they call it 790, 890, 1290. It's like different I think names it's the now. Same. Is it? Yeah, I think I don't know a ton about junior dragsters, but yeah. yeah, I think it's the same. Are you gonna put your kids in junior dragsters? Um, so my my girls, every once in a while, they'll express interest. Um, and uh, they actually Insta Carmen, so I'm sure Uncle. They call him Uncle Dave. Uh, Uncle Dave, you know, would they have some juniors that they could jump into if they wanted to. So I'm just kind of seeing if that's what they want to do. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. I, they have a little friend that's a girl that does it. And when she talks about it, they both kind of are more interested in it. Mm -hmm. Um, and then little man, I don't know, man, I have, I, when I was, so my dad's a drag racer, which you guys watch, you know that too. Um, but I, um, I never really liked the junior thing. They put me in a 790 car when I was like 12. So I technically wasn't old enough to drive a 790 car. And man, I thought it was like the most boring thing ever. And um, that's when I really did, 
had to, my dad was like, I'll either help you get a junior dragster or we can go get a dirt bike. And I'm like, oh, I want a dirt bike. That's mm-hmm. way cooler. So I think that maybe little man will probably be more like that, you mm-hmm. know? Um, but yeah, the, the junior dragster is a great program, but it just, they just weren't fast. <laughs> but people lie. They're like, well, they go fast, but I don't know, man. Like I'm one of the people too. I think you probably agree with this. Like drag racing, we're just going straight. And unless it's fast and like somewhat of a difficult surface, it's I'm sorry, it's, mm-hmm. it's it's just not that interesting. Have you, you have know? you ever bracket raced? Never have. Really? No, yeah, never. But have. your dad's like great at it, right? I mean, yeah. Like I actually, uh, I didn't even like drag racing, which is really funny. I I uh, I kind of got drug around the country, you know, not drug. I wanted to go, but. Um, went to all these NHRA races with him and he races super stock. So it is, it's, you know, it's kind of mm-hmm. what, um, you know, I'll call him your father-in-law. He does stock eliminator. So right. real similar. Um, it was just so boring, man. And, uh, yeah, I'm like, this is not I get for that. me, you know, and it just, I was riding my dirt bike and, you know, hanging yeah. out with my buddies and I had a little dirt bike phase too. That's good. Everybody so, should have a dirt I don't want to get away from his question though. I didn't I I didn't even fully answer it. But so yeah, me and my brother both junior we were in junior dragsters and I actually quit after I got into eight ninety. Um we actually sold my twelve ninety junior and I hopped into Billy's hand me down. I hopped into his junior and I think at that point he was getting ready for uh racing a big car. He was yeah. in my dad's Nova. And I think I only did eight ninety for a year and at that point I was in in, I can't remember. I think I, was, I think I was in middle school, maybe fifth to sixth grade, and I decided I wanted to uh, play football. Mm. And so I gave up drag series because I was tired of waking up at seven to go bracket race on in the Saturday. morning on a Saturday. <laughs> yeah. Like it, I don't know, it just sucked. And then I just wasn't having that much fun. I was winning, but I still wasn't having fun. And I don't know if it was just because I was so scared of losing because of the pressure from my dad or what it was. but I, So I decided to play football, and I rode that out until I was junior in high school, and I quit because I, I, I stopped having fun at that too. And that's when I decided to – a lot of things happened in high school with me, um, but eventually I did get back into racing after high school. But I got into cameras first and video stuff. Um, so it was more like Billy needed help filming, and you're like, I like to film. Like, Yeah, know. so like when I was a freshman and sophomore, uh, I never really left the house that much. I, I just played video games. Like, gotcha. Did I, you have like one of them gangster computers that like you built yourself? I was an and, Xbox kid. Okay, okay. So <laughs> I, have, I have a gangster computer now because, you know, I use it for editing, but I, it's a gaming PC. So, you know, I still, <laughs> me, and, me and Billy, we still play video games and stuff. And our new, our new guy... Steve Tanner, <laughs> he's he plays video games, so it's kind of a good relationship we got going because we get to you know we're working together during the day, but we come home and we can all like it's almost like I wouldn't say like team building. I, I guess it is kind it of is, team building. Yeah. We hop on and we play video games, and it's like we're all friends. We're not just coworkers, which I think is a great thing. You know, we we get along well, and he's been great. So my freshman year, um, I took a digital art class. Now. When I was a freshman... A bit of freshman in high school. Freshman in high school, yeah. I never went to college or nothing. But, um, like, p- kids took that class as, like, easy A. Like, that was a... Nobody was there trying to actually do digital photography. And most of the kids that were in there were pothead juniors and seniors. And you were lucky if you got in as, like, a freshman because it was, like, the seniors get first dibs and whatnot. But at that point, Billy was starting the YouTube channel... And the original name of the YouTube channel, which I think you guys talked about this on his podcast, it was like something Warriors. It was like... No, he didn't say that. He didn't. Uh, the original name of the channel was like Street Warriors. I, I can't remember what it was. Something Warriors. It was something really corny. Well, that's bad. Yeah. Yeah. Something. <laughs> it was something odd. And eventually he decided to name it Street Racing Channel at some point. Did he ever post it under that name? That oh yeah, the first two or three videos, which there's some just some grudge racing videos from Columbus way back. Yeah, um, but so he he drew out a logo one day, 
that he wanted done. And he knew I was in digital art or whatever. And this was like only three or four weeks into the year. I was just learning Photoshop and Lightroom. And he drew it out. And I was like, well, I'll see if I can make it. And, you know, we'll see what happens. I don't know. And I actually like really impressed my teacher. Um, I think her name was Mrs. Abraham. She probably never watched this, but she was one of my favorite Maybe teachers. She might be a Ma- huge fan. Might be. <laughs> but she was one of my favorite teachers. I've always wanted to go back and like say hello to my old teachers. I always had really good relationships with my teachers. And I was always nice because I always felt like all the other kids were like shitheads and it drive me nuts. But uh, so I made this logo and it's literally just a rectangle on the bottom a trapezoid that makes the flashlight, and then SRC, which I don't even know what the font is to this day. I don't even know what one I, pe- I picked out. And it's a miracle I still even have the original file. Like, I don't even know how I still have it. I had to ask Gina Rose, you know, she yeah. makes our shirts. I had to ask it back like two years later. I'm like, I don't have the original file. Do you have it? She's like, yeah. So I got it back. But it's a rectangle trapezoid that makes a flashlight, and you got the font, and then another rectangle up top, and then just wrote out SRC or street racing channel. And I showed it to my digital art teacher. She's like, wow, that's amazing. Like, it's, <laughs> it is a great logo. It's simple. And I don't know. So I showed it to Billy. He's like, all right, well, that works. And then <laughs> I can hear it. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like he doesn't care. <laughs> but yeah, so I, I, I don't know if a lot of people know. I, I actually made the logo and then. And that's still the that. one that, and that's still it's the still one. still the you, OG logo. Nice. Yeah. Well, honestly, out of like, you know, you guys have branched off done other stuff but like like when i buy something from you guys that's actually what i want i love that logo like i think like branding really like is i love that simple thing you know it, yeah. it's it, it's easy to remember it's easy to look at like yeah. all that easy to print that's another thing yeah. is like yeah it, it's awesome and there's actually a few imperfections on the original logo like people's original hoodie there's a piece of like the bottom of the R that has like a weird hump where I forgot to erase because I was doing it. (laughs) I was doing it all wrong. Like I was just, I was putting shapes in there and like, Oh, I I, I did not do it the right way at all. Like, but you know, it, it worked and you got it done. I got it done. But so it started with that. And then, so I, I had a rough period in uh, my high school years, when I, when I was a sophomore, my uh, best friend passed away in a car accident. And uh, we've been best friends since first grade. And that was really tough for me to get through. Um, that pretty much, I, I, that just made me more not want to leave the house or have any aspirations of anything. I just played video games to... That's a lot to handle, man. Yeah, I just I I play video games because that's that's how I kept my brain not thinking about other shit, and uh, it was a tough period in high school that I went through. But I remember one night Billy uh, came into my room and he saw I was upset, and uh, I don't even remember why I was so upset. I I don't know what my deal was, but I just I was realizing I had no motivation to do anything else. And wasn't passionate about anything really. And um, oh, I, I remember what sparked it now. I remember. So my great grandma had just passed away. And she had this Chevy Lumina that was like garage kept. Like she just never pristine. drove it. Pristine <laughs> Chevy Lumina. <laughs> was it a Z34? <laughs> I don't even I don't even know what I don't know. <laughs> it, it was a mint condition Lumina that just sat in the garage because she never got out and drove. She's too old. Um and they ended up handing it down to me as a car to drive to school, which I first drove my blue S10, and then the brake lines went out on it one day driving it, and then I had this. I was driving my mom's Tahoe for a while, and then I got stuck in this Lumina, which I loved. It was a great car, but I was late to school one day, and it was in the winter, and windshield was fogged up. But I'm like, ah, this will be good enough. I need to go. And I ended up rear-ending somebody and ruining this car. And I just felt like a fuck-up. Like, I was like, I just, I don't know. That's, I think that's what sparked it. And so many things happened at once that year, like losing my best friend and just feeling like a, a loser. And so uh, I think Billy kind of noticed, and he's like, 
I think he just kind of motivated. I can't remember exactly what he said, but I just we had a long talk, and he motivated me to like I, I really need help filming. You know, I need a camera guy. Like we can really take this thing to the next level. I, I need your help. Yeah, he saw that it could go to the next level, and so I finally started coming out to races with them and. Because before I, they would go out racing. I'd stay at home all weekend and just sit at the house and play video games. Like that was it. Yeah, I mean, I'll be like I, you know, like I fall. Like I said, I, I really because I, Billy came to uh, our event at Clay City, which was actually my first time driving a race car. Um, he filmed that. That was the first time I ever drove a real race car. Was at that race, and he was filming. So like I followed him from there on out because mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, that's cool, you know. Um, because with my moto background, I I liked when people made cool edits. Yeah, you know, so like to see that in the race car world was rad. So, but I didn't even know you existed. You know, <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> so, no, I get that. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't really appear until. And I, I talk about this a lot. I missed a lot of good times, um, wasting time at home, not being out and experiencing stuff. Wasted a lot of good memories. Like, I see old videos on SRC that I wasn't around yet of Billy street racing down in uh, Oklahoma city with Toby. And they did like the biggest cash days ever. Like I didn't get to experience that. And it bugs me a lot. Cause I'm like, damn, if I was, if I was filming and helping at that point, how much better that video could have been. Um, well, you just weren't ready yet. Man. Yeah. I just, you know, I guess I just wasn't ready, but I don't think you like a lot of times we get into this notion that we waste time, which we can, Right. Um, but man, you, you had to go through your own like healing journey, right? Like that's heavy for, you know, it's still heavy, right? I'm sure. And that's a lot to go through. So, I, you know, I wouldn't, I don't know, man, like, yeah, I wouldn't be bummed about it. Like it, it prepared you for the future. For sure. Right? You know, and I don't know, it's, yeah, that's a lot to navigate through. And, and, you know, especially if that was your, you know, your number one only the person that you really talked to, like, gosh, dude, that's a lot. Just yeah. a lot. It's tough. Like, and I remember being so sad. Like, I we had a pretty big friend group. Um, well, Mason, his, name, his name was Mason. Um, he was friends with everybody. Like, a lot of people would consider him his, their best friend. And it, I just remember, like, at first, I was. I think I was just in shock. And I was more of caring for everyone else and making sure everyone else was okay. Because, you know, we had – there was probably – three weeks straight where nobody was even in class. We would just go straight to the library every day and they had counselors and I was just helping to make sure everybody else is okay. And I hadn't, I had, I had never, I felt bad cause I'd never cried about it. Yeah. And I could never understand. I was like, why am I not crying? But like, I'm really sad about it. And then one day I was sitting in class three weeks later after we finally were, we had to go back to classes and I was sitting in class and I just, I had to leave. And uh, yeah, it was, just, it was hard. It was really hard. I had I had a rough year my sophomore year, but you know, now yeah. look, it's all yeah. good. Yeah. Well, and I think like the 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 biggest thing I try to think about it when you lose someone like that that's so close to you is like, you know, man, like they don't want you to be miserable. Like you yeah. know what I mean? Like they, you know, everybody when someone leaves this planet for their next adventure, it's you know they. They don't want us to sit here and be sad about all that. Like, you know, I feel it, bad. I'm making this podcast really sad. It's not sad. It's just, <laughs> it's, it's your experience. It's, it's yeah. a human, it's a human experience, man. I don't, I don't talk about it a lot, really. And it's, it's hitting me right now. I, it's because I never talk about it. I think, you know, we bottle things up a lot and, uh, you know, it's, it comes out sometimes, I guess. But, well, no, I, no, I mean, like that in the, I think the sooner in life that, because that's the the male quality. Not that I guess we are taking this podcast deep, but like that's really like the male quality of a lot like, of people bottle stuff. Yeah, up. we just bottled up. Like let's just keep moving, keep moving, keep yeah. moving. And uh, man, the a lot of the most successful people that I in my life that I really can take solid advice from are the people that don't right. They don't bottle anything. They kind of they always are sharing with somebody that's trusted, yeah, right, and to get it out and, and to help you move forward. and Or, you know, like what happened to you, you, you know, obviously your brother knew that, and he's like, man, this could be a great outlet for you. And, 
it, you know, you may not love race cars, but you do love filming, yeah. right? And obviously now you really like cars, but it... I've always been into art. Like, that's why I took the digital art class. I wasn't taking it for an easy A. I was actually interested in it. And I always wanted to... The, the, I think my first thing I ever thought about doing was being a graphic designer and doing, like, uh, logos for businesses. So that was, like, my first thing I ever thought I'd do. And then, and then I went through a photography thing. Like, I was just doing pictures. And that was fun. And then, you know, eventually Billy asked for my help, and that's when I got into the video stuff. Yeah. And I think a lot of the reason, which as nerdy as this is going to sound, that I'm decent at video stuff is because I've played video games my whole life, and I'm artsy and kind of nerdy about it. So, you know, I've just I've watched a lot of shows and movies, and I've played a lot of video games, So, and I'm just a little bit tech-savvy, so... I still learn something new all the time, though. Like like I said, I've never been to college or nothing, so I've completely taught off of YouTube and just experiences. Which is wild, like, you know, it, to think that, you know, in this day and age, like, like you know, you are watch this, you're a professional YouTuber, right? To, like, how wild is that? They're <laughs> like, you know, you, you graduate high school or what is it in high school? And you're like, man, I really like graphic design. Maybe I'll just make logos for businesses because that makes sense right so like if you you know if you told somebody 10 years ago that yeah i mean i'm gonna graduate high school and then you know my brother's got this youtube channel and i'm gonna help him with that you know we're just gonna travel around yeah drag race and you know we're gonna document doing illegal stuff on the street and these races yeah, and yeah. you know we're gonna make a living doing that. <laughs> like you are bananas yeah <laughs> Well, so what's funny, now. <laughs> what's funny is the beginning of my senior year, I thought I wanted to be a cop. I thought. I wasn't thinking. <laughs> and, uh, you know, nothing against police or nothing. I, I've got nothing against police. But um, I, I, I think it was because my grandpa was a cop. He was a Columbus cop. And I really expect, respected him for that. And then Mason's dad was also a cop. And the other thing, too, is when you hit that junior, senior year mark, your teacher's always asking you, well, what do you want to do? Yeah. Where are you going to go to college? What are you going to study? And I didn't know. And so I didn't want to say that I didn't know. So I was just, oh, I'm going to be a cop. Cops are cool, right? Yeah. It's I'm going to be a cop. Easy answer. Like, oh, that's I a, just yeah. didn't want to be embarrassed or like they almost, like, it's almost like, oh, well, he's going to be a loser if he doesn't know what he wants to do yet. That's how you almost feel. Maybe, no, I remember but, that all too well. <laughs> yeah, you almost get, like, guilty because you don't know what you're going to do. Or, like, you graduate and you're like, shit, what the hell am I going to do? I don't want to work at McDonald's. So I thought I wanted to be a cop just because that was the easy answer. But, boy, am I the complete opposite now. <laughs> but it's well, it's just, just It's so rad, like, the the uh, avenues that the world really does open up mm -hmm. and you have to be able to, you know, want to be able to take a chance on it. And which obviously you did, you know, you probably don't feel like that, but you did. I mean, you said yes to coming out and, you know, filming this and investing in. I what fell in doing. love with it quick too. Yeah. It wasn't like they had to drag me there. Like they had to drag me there for the first time. And then after that, you know, I was, I was hooked. Yeah. Well, for me, like, like, on the drag racing side of stuff, like I said, I didn't really like it. And then I went to um, – when Edgewater used to do uh, Thursday Night Lights and Friday Night Lights, I went and I'm like, what do you mean I don't have to get here at like 7 a.m.? And then like, you know, there's pretty girls and, <laughs> you know, like this is cool and there's a DJ. You're yeah. like, man, this actually – this is cool, yeah. You know, which I'm sure you kind of felt a little bit the same yeah, way, you know, for it, sure. It, yeah, just not so stuffy. Yeah, you know? yeah. yeah. I, I had been, you know, been around racing my whole life, going and bracket racing, and watching my dad when I was little, and uh, I don't think I understood bracket racing until I was older. I was just just picking the cooler car I wanted to win. I was like, oh. Screw that Fox body. I want the Nova to win, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or whatever. Yeah. I hated dragsters. And, like, any door car that was going against a dragster, I'm like, ah, I want the door car to win. But, yeah, I, once I figured out the no prep stuff, I mean, it was de it's definitely a cooler atmosphere. And But I still do enjoy bracket racing, and I do want to still I, – I, it's a lot more relaxing. I'll yeah. say that. You're not worried about, like, going down more in the woods and, like, possibly dying every time. <laughs> <laughs> like you don't have to worry about that at least when it's you're bracket like, racing. Imminent death here. Imminent death here. Yeah, this yeah. is okay. <laughs> yeah, it's a little more relaxed, 
and strategic with bracket racing. And I enjoy watching Allison do it. And I'd say the best way to get into racing is just bracket racing. I mean, it just builds good uh, fundamentals for yeah. racing. So that's what the stage that Allison is in now. And it's fun getting to I, – I try not to teach her too much because she doesn't – She's going to hate this, but she doesn't take advice the greatest from me because I don't give it very well. And that's the same thing with the camera stuff, too, is I've always, I've kind of had to teach her. And she's doing an awesome job, but the way I'll always feel about it is no one's ever going to try as hard at SRC or racing as I am because I'm, I'm always going to care about it more than anybody else. I don't care what anybody tells me. Yeah. And so it's been hard to, like, hand it off to her. What I've figured out over the last couple of years of just me finally competitively racing, like when we got the Falcon, and um, for the longest time I wasn't tuning it. Like I was just driving as fast as I can. I'd throw me in the car and I'm ready to go. Like, yeah, they told me I could let go of this button. Yeah, <laughs> like I was, I was just driving the car basically. But now I'm finally tuning and everything, and it's a lot more work. And I'm having, I've been learning a lot. And when, like. So, you know, I started filming and now I'm racing and the videos are so important to me, but also racing is so important to me. It's my two passions. Yeah. And if I put more effort into one, the other one will lack. And it's been really hard to, to I mean, just with Allison, she's been help, she's been a huge help, but like, it's hard for me to hand it off completely and let myself go full race mode. Yeah. And I finally... I finally did it when we were at New Orleans, and I was like, it's going to take all my brain power because the race took 24 hours. Like, yeah. It was like a – it's like an endurance race. Yeah, I couldn't – like, I, I commend anybody that stayed because I, I, I would have been out. I'm, I, I couldn't have I'm done. I was, like, <laughs> I was like, I'm in it to win it, man. Yeah, like, no, I appreciate it, man. It's rad. I, yeah, I don't think I, I would have been called my wife like, I'm coming home. No, <laughs> yeah. And there was, a, there was a point where I was, like, ready to just be done, but – I stuck through it, and I'm glad I did. But there, there was a point where I had to hand it off to Allison and let her take over the filming and trust her to, you know, do the job, so that I could focus on racing. And it's really hard for me to do because, like I said, I, I'm always gonna feel it's it's a bad thing because like there's Allison will definitely she tries just as hard as I do. Yeah, but I'm always gonna feel like oh. I'm the only one that's going to do my very, very best at it because it's, it's like my baby. Just as much as, as, as it is Billy's, the channel is my, my baby, and I'll, I'm going to try as hard as I can at yeah. it. Yeah. But I, I had to hand it off to her. I had to go full race mode. And that's what happens when I can, I can, do, I can get to the finals with freaking Frank at the pad. Like, it worked out great. Yeah. And a lot of people are right. Everybody says I, 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 I don't give myself enough credit, and I'm trying to be better about that, like the whole self-esteem thing. But, you know, I just I try to stay humble. You're great at it, man. You, you like, you, you, um, yeah, you really carry yourself well, man, and I think. I try. And, like, dishing out credit is great, you know. Like, I think, like, that's okay, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that, you know, because it, it is, it, it. All this, man, it takes an army, you know, like it, that's what a lot of people, the people that don't understand that are the people that are, you know, they'll never, they'll never do anything crazy great in their life because they just want to do it all on their own. Well, that's not how we were built to live, you know. Yeah, you're absolutely right. We're just built to, you know, be a team and and help and, you know, where someone's weak, someone else is strong, you know, and like, man, she did, I love that video. It was great. She did an awesome job. And I woke up like... So I was texting Happy a bit, and uh, like, cause I was trying to keep up, man. Like I, I love, I do, I love drag racing, and I think, I do think about my life now, where, kind of what you're talking about, like, thinking back and and how you know it, you wish you would have been involved earlier, stuff like that. I think about that for my own life, cause I really didn't like race cars until I was, let's see, probably twenty two or twenty three. And then, like, I put a Turbo LS car together that I had. I had a MIG welder. I stuff looked awful. It was <laughs> awful, you know. And like, I went to welding school because like I wanted to know how to weld better. But that's a whole other side conversation. Um, but in that in that time frame, like I was tr- like probably like nineteen. To, I got married at twenty two, but we didn't have kids till later. But 
um, you know, 19 to 23, I traveled with my dirt bike buddies and we went all over the place. And like, I really didn't have any restrictions. Right. So I could have like, if I would have had a car back then, I could have done all these crazy things and I wouldn't have been calling my wife, like checking on, you know, mm-hmm. the kids and doing all these things that I have to, and not that I, I love those things now. Like I would never trade them, but to be your age and, you know, you're down there at the pad with your chick. You guys are doing it together. Like that's such a rad experience. You know, like what a what a great thing. You know, like you know, you're there with your family. Like yeah. dude, that's so cool. You yeah, know, it, it, you're right, man. It it takes a team. It it took all of us to get that done. You know, Big Rob with us helping. Oh, I love Big Rob. Um, Steve Tanner. <laughs> he's taking over filming a little bit too, which is awesome. And I haven't. He he's only watched me do it. Like he'll stand behind me while I'm filming. And he's, like, watched me change settings on the camera. And one day we were filming in the shop, um, a recent vlog in the shop. And normally I never get – we never have videos of me working on the car because I'm either filming or nobody else is filming for me to, you know. Yeah. Everybody thinks, like, I can't wrench, which I do suck at wrenching. But I'm trying to get better. Yeah. But people are always making fun of me because my hands are never dirty and whatnot. But so – and I was was working on the the Falcon – and Steve just walks up and starts filming. I'm like, whoa, 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 hold on. Let me make sure the settings are right. And he's like, no, it's good. I, lo- I look at it. I'm like, holy shit. <laughs> yeah, you did like, that. <laughs> he, he set the camera up by himself. I didn't have to teach him. I didn't have to tell him. He just did it. Yeah. And it was, I was like, oh, wow, was like, yeah. that's awesome. So he's been a huge help. And, you know, my dad down there helping. Um, Billy was helping line me up. And normally he's helping give me advice, but like on the tuning side, but he was just like, dude, you do your thing. He's like, you're, you're doing fine. Like you do whatever you want. Like I ain't telling you nothing. Cause I ain't, I don't want to mess you up is what he said. No, I was so impressed. Like, so I, I, I was texting happy and I, then I woke, fell asleep. Um, I didn't even make it to the ball drop on New Year's. That's that's <laughs> three kids, right? Like we're yeah, we yeah, we were we were playing monster trucks till about ten thirty, and then we passed out, <laughs> worn out, hey, worn out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think me and my wife we heard uh, you know the fireworks go off, so we like rolled over and gave each other a kiss for. I mean that's 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 what exactly got. what happened to me. We were because we were you know we were there and we were lack of sleep, and Allison's like, can we please watch the ball drop? I'm like. <laughs> and she had it playing on her phone like silently and we were asleep and then it went off and we we're like huh, huh. Okay. <laughs> yeah. and you're, already, it. You're, yeah. already, you're already getting the whole time <laughs> yeah i had the exact same experience you had probably it's funny but so then i woke up i don't know it was like eight or whatever and uh i like got on youtube i'm like holy crap they're still racing yeah. so i was like Dig. <laughs> yeah. So I got. And you're probably more like Tommy's in the finals. No, like, I I actually really believe in you most of the time. Like I knew that, like you know that that's in a very that was a very eclectic group of cars, right? Oh, but, it was tough. Yeah, there's a lot of really fast stuff there, and you know, I haven't ever been there, but to me, you know, outside looking in, like that that surface early looks really good. Mm-hmm. So. And and you guys always sixty foot the the Falcon pretty good, you know. I'm like, well, that's man, that's all it's got, buddy. Y- yeah, well, I mean, I got a nitrous <laughs> car, bro. I can relate. So yeah. you got to get it in, like. So I figured you would do that, you know. Mm-hmm. And, and um, you know, obviously the chip, how the chips fall, that's a huge thing. But um, man, I, you know, and I, you know, I know the the Prestons pretty well. Like we're both from Kentucky. Like you know, I know them boys and I respect them. Yeah. Um, but when you left the starting line couple things you did you left on him and then um what most people do when they race a car like that is they absolutely woof the tune up and it spins and that thing you made a lick dude and i really think like if it wouldn't have tore itself up that you know i I don't know if you would have won but it would have been even closer than what it was like man you made some really great decisions that day i mean really great you should be super proud of that thank you and I mean, I'm like on the edge of my seat, you know, at my house. My wife was like, you know, what are you, you know, I was so excited for you. Cause I honestly thought you won <laughs> because I, I, whatever live feed I was watching, you know, there was no, you know, there was no big in camera. So you, you left on Isaac and then like, I'm like, he out 60 footed him. Like, 
And I knew that, like, obviously the, the vet's got big horsepower, but after 300 foot, there's not a whole lot there, you know? It, yeah. It, so it wasn't – I knew he couldn't. I gave him a race, and that was my goal. Um, oh, you gave him more than a race. Like, yeah. Like, I mean, he was in the gravel. <laughs> yeah. And that's why that's why I didn't – I didn't want to turn it up a bunch and spin. I was like, it's either going to be a good race – like I, I'm not gonna go out there and and spin and then it's just like oh well that sucked like yeah I wanted I did I did what I thought it would take and I I wasn't gonna be like well let's just put thirty pounds in it all the way down yeah I, I just I I wasn't conservative either I was I made the right decisions every round I feel like and by the end of it I had a really good tune and you know this past season we finally figured out how to use traction control and I had a really good curve. And that's what let me get aggressive so that, you know, if anything happens, trash control is going to catch it because I have a perfect line. I was Yeah, the trash control can be the hero. Yeah, but I never hit it. And, yeah, I mean, I was just happy to give him a good race. And I do want to say one thing. They were super nice. Like, he came up to me before the race and said he wanted to split. Yeah. And I couldn't believe it. I was like, dude, you got me. I'm a I'm a dead fish in the water. Like, No, you weren't, though. Uh, you weren't. On paper. No. On paper. Well, not even on paper, though, because, like, you're to the point of not giving yourself enough credit. Like, that's – that sur- like, we talk about surfaces being limiting factors. And, you know, yeah, like, dude, you are on a street. There's people that are out there, you know – like mudding it up, yeah. you know, you don't a lot know of variables. Yeah. You don't know if a trash truck's going to come down through there and yep. leak crap all over that lane. Like, dude, you are street racing. Like it's, yeah. you know, who knows? Like, but no, like they're always, you know, the many time we race those guys, man, like, you know, we've, we've beat them and they've beat us. Right. It's it, there's, um, I don't know. They're good. Right. And, but anything can happen. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Yeah, they they gained my respect for that. Um they were just very nice to me and uh you know even afterwards they were saying they were, they they were telling me how impressed they were and I just I really appreciate it coming from them because of what they've been able to do these last I mean they they've always been fast like even yeah. coming from the radial stuff but yeah they they're doing an awesome job and it's 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 it, it, to be even close to that car is it's crazy. Yeah, so. no, you did a great job, dude. And I'm, you know, it, the, uh, you know, you never, uh, the Falcon, like, man, it's such a great little car. And I mean, you could run, the cool thing about it, it, it fits a lot of different rules. So if you wanted to, I mean, really, it's a true street car. It's really what it is. Yeah. Um, the, but, you know, on surfaces like that, it can definitely hold its own. So the funny thing is, is when Billy bought the white Camaro that we dropped off today, he was like, you want to run this thing? I said, Man, I don't want to go that. I don't know if I even want to go. You that do fast. want to go that fast. Maybe I do, but I also. Want Me and to him end- actually already had this conversation. We talked about this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I was just like, I I really like the car I have, and you know, it is kind of like a street car. We could really make it a street car and put it back on U eighty five, and I could daily that motherfucker if I wanted to. Yeah. Will we? Probably not. But. I enjoy driving it, and I can drive it, you know, on short cruises. I I used to take it to get ice cream last summer, like, didn't didn't bother me none. And, you know, I, I enjoy driving that car. It's still got a full dash. It's got carpet. Like, it's, it feel, it's a comfortable car for me, and it's just what I'm used to. But I'm also just, I don't know if I want to go to places where I even would need a, ca- a car of that caliber to race. Like, I would rather just go down to a street car class and I know people are going to say I'm a puppy kicker or whatever, but I would rather do a class where I have a cruise to fit in and yeah. do the cruise before the race. I would enjoy that so much more, I think. And, you know, fa- going fast is fun, but it, it just seems like I can't afford that yet. Like, yeah, maybe down the road, but I just, well, you're I can't. Not, you're not like the, the thing that like a lot of times people do throw around the, the term like puppy kicker, but you're not like, that, I think a lot of times in, in the no prep world, like, because no prep is relatively new. If we're talking the scheme of drag racing, oh, right, yeah. it's relatively new thing. And, like, you know, classes and rules and the way that it breaks up and stuff, people are kind of still trying to figure that out. Uh, but really, man, like, you know, people do get tied up a lot of times in what the name of the class is. So, like, on the radial side of stuff, we have a class called Ultra Street, 
right? They're not street cars. They're ultra street cars, <laughs> right? They're you can't take them to go get ice cream. You know, like now, now they're like they're running four forties with seventy six millimeter mm-hmm. turbos. That, yeah, and the cars weigh three thousand pounds. They're really impressive, but just because the name is Alter Street doesn't make them a street car. And that's what, like, no prep now, like, you know, if you're talking a true street car, like, well, as long as if, if it fits, it ships. Right. Period. Yeah. You know, you just look at a rule set, and, you know, we were picking on Jimmy Dale earlier about, you know, he always runs the daily driver stuff. Well, man, his car fit. He th- – you know, Jimmy Dale's a lot of things, but he is Let smart. me stop you right there. That thing has a five-gallon fuel cell. Exactly. But if it fits, it ships. It fits and it ships. So you're right. It does have five gallons, which does not fit the title of the name of the class. <laughs> right. But the car fits the yeah. rules. So if we just you know took daily off and, and called it dry, extreme driver... Yeah. Well, all right. Well, yeah. yeah. The people. So people get so caught up in the yeah. name, and then they're like, they "Really do?" Ah! Yeah. <laughs> but that doesn't really matter. I don't care what the name of the class is, as long as it fits. You know. Yeah. So, but no, I get it though. You, you, you and you might, dude. Like, like on a radial deal. Like, if you like, let's just say we put that that Camaro on radials and it went four twenties, a four twenty pass on a radial. Versus a four fifty pass on a set of slicks is just completely yeah. different ball game. Yeah, they're not like th- as long as the radio car set up right, that's a boring deal, mm-hmm. right? Like not boring. It's still really fast. The acceleration is so rad. Mm-hmm. Um, that that part's rad. Yeah, but you, and you might like it more than what you think. Yeah. Well, I I I don't know if I'm just scared of it or what, but I just. And the other thing too is I'm not ready to maintain a car of that caliber. I like the Falcon because it's it's easy, it's low maintenance. Yeah, and it it takes a beating. Like it doesn't have like aluminum rods in there or nothing. Where it's just a high maintenance deal. So it's just I just I just love that car and I just want to keep racing it for now. I think. But well, and the other thing you're really smart in this just to kind of give you a compliment here is like most people. When you're talking competitiveness and drag racing, they don't know when to quit, right? Of like, man, this is my budget. My my racing goals really fall within this budget. And like, you know, now like, you know, people do complain about small tire. But the reality is, in our world, small tire is the fastest class, right? It's going to be the most expensive to run. It doesn't have any rules. It's impossible for it not to not be it's going to be expensive. It's the highest yeah. level. It's going yeah. to be expensive. Um, but you're really great to like look at that and be like, man, I don't, I don't really want to do that. And you're all the other thing you're smart about is like, you know, that your time's already divided. And, you know, you're one of your biggest goals is to create content. Well, it's hard to create content with a car that's always broke. Yeah. Yeah. It would be a lot. Or a car that you have to maintain a bunch. <laughs> yeah. No, I just I love the car that I'm racing so much, and and hopefully when I get my S10 done, um, that'll be like my my real street car. And you know we're putting this 388 in the Falcon now and bigger turbos. Which every single time I lost this season, somebody com- like m- hundreds of comments. Falcon needs bigger turbos. Falcon needs a Pro Charger. Falcon needs this. Falcon needs that. It's just like oh, so we're <laughs> finally up doing upgrades, which. The car since since we bought it, nothing not a lot has changed. It's the same engine, the same transmission, the same. Like maybe we did switch transmission, but it's a power glide. Yeah, and the same eight eight rear end. Like it's, it's, it's a great car. Yeah, I mean we haven't we didn't have to do a lot. We just had to tweak Billy tweak some bar angles and we adjusted some things around and then just it was. I, I think uh, Chris Pilato was the guy who built the car. Yeah. And uh, he was so close to having a really, really good car. Like, as you can see, like, we didn't do much. But he I, he was mostly by himself. And that's what we're circling back to is it takes a team. Yeah. And, you know, but he was really close. And he built an awesome car. And it's it's funny. When we bought the car, it had the big steering wheel, the, the original oh, yeah, factory yeah. steering wheel. I dug wheel. that steering wheel. Yeah. Well, I raced it like that like once or twice. Sketchy, yeah, really yeah, sketchy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I like the first race was uh, 
the backside race. It was um, what's it called at uh, Dragway Forty Two? Yeah, uh, Chris Lane's race, Stripper Glare's race, um, and you know it was a backside race. So it's a little you get some wheel speed because it's pretty it's a rough surface, and like it takes a while for it you it's actually to wheelie. feel some correction. <laughs> yeah. and so we got rid of that pretty fast. And But we sent that steering wheel back to him. We actually sent it to his buddies, I think, because it was like their inside joke or whatever. But, yeah, so that was cool. That is cool. But that's the that's literally like the only thing that's changed on that car is the steering wheel. Everything else is, like, original from when we bought it. We just tweaked a few things. And Chris Pallotta was so close with it. And I always kind of felt bad. I'm like, dude, he probably hates us. Like, we're... We just took his car, and now we're winning with it. But he loves the fact that what he built is going out and winning races. Like, yeah. he's, he's super happy. and He's a nice dude, man. He called, yeah. I, I've talked to him maybe once or twice. Um, we got him hooked up with some new some parts and stuff. And, yeah, dude, super I good, think he's dude. building another car. Yeah, we, we got him some four-link stuff and That's awesome. some stuff like that. He, good dude, man. Seemed really awesome yeah. on the phone. I haven't seen him since we bought the car. I'd hopefully I get to see him again, maybe when he gets his new car out. And I, I need to thank him because I, I love that car, dude. I, I, I probably I, not the car you would have built, right? Like if you no, knew. like, and uh, I've always I was like my dad. He hated LSs, so I automatically hated him as well. Yeah, whatever your dad thinks. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. So I automatically hated L- LSs too, and I always hated how people were saying the truck. Anytime the truck would lose, oh, it needs an LS. Like all the LS people, there's good. There's a good side of them, and there's like the bad side where it just it's LS or nothing, and those people are annoying. But I mean, you just can't beat it. Like for the, the money, man. Like we we talked about this earlier when the first time that we raced Billy on prep on our in our white Mustang, and uh, you know that thing went 165 mile an hour. And it was a stock block, stock crank mm-hmm. deal, you know, like mm-hmm. for the money, like still hydraulic roller, like, gosh, man, like at 3,000 pounds, like that's a lot of bang for your buck, you know, like, yeah, <laughs> I mean, what, what more do you want from it, yeah. you know? Yeah, they're, they're just, there's nothing better than that for the money, really. Yeah, but. So, yeah we, we have that, we, it was a six liter stock block, um, half filled with concrete. Yeah. Um, and, you know, had a, a built bottom end and everything. But this new engine we got, Mike Lau 388, I, I can't wait because I've lost so many races where I just needed, like, six mile an hour, seven mile an hour, and I would be fine. Yeah. And now that I know how to 60 foot really good, because I think a lot, like, a lot of these people that have a lot of lot of power, like 3,000 horsepower cars, and they're 60 foot in, like, one fours that were in the woods, but they're running 190 mile an hour somehow. <laughs> yeah. It's like, dude, if some of these people could figure out a 60 foot, but it's like they don't even need to because they just they leave easy and they just fly out the back. So I think once I get that little bit of mile an hour, I know how to 60 foot really well and 330 really well. All it is now is just applying that new power I'm going to have out the back. and I yeah. can't wait to get my hands on it. So no, the motor looks awesome. I uh, watched the video. Of it, it. it looks fast now. It almost, yeah. Yeah. It's like before it was a little bit inconspicuous, but now it looks so nice. It looks fast. Yeah. And I've talked to Mike a couple times. He seems like a great guy. So. Oh, he's he's awesome. I got to meet him when I delivered. Uh, we we did one freshen up on this engine that we've that's still in. Well, it's out of it now. But the engine yeah. that came with the car, we did one freshen up, and I delivered the en- engine to him. And I got to see a shop, and it was really neat because. It's just a shop behind his house, and it's not like you'd, – you'd almost think it would be something like this. Yeah. But it's just – I don't know. It's just him and another guy, I think, and they do it all, they do an awesome job. That's and, cool. Yeah. I mean, I just it wasn't expected, but, yeah, he's super nice, and, yeah, he's great. That's cool. I do got – I have to apologize for something that you don't even know happened. Uh-oh. So uh, your blue-ass 10 um, – before it died and now it's coming back. Um, then at the time, Billy messaged me and asked if we would put an 850 cert in it for you. And at the time was when we were still building a lot of cars. Mm-hmm. So I was like, man, I would love to do it, but I just, uh, I'm so backed up. Now, you know, I could have done it. It wouldn't have been a problem. But yeah, I guess it's our fault that it, you know. No. 
Uh-oh, you can't take the blame for that. Listen, the car, that truck could be done right now. Like, nothing's holding it back now. We can't use the excuse that it's it's not in chassis jail anymore. Yeah. Like, we could put it back together. And uh, my dad has put together a 415 for it. I don't even know what's in it. He doesn't even talk to me about it. But he put together an engine for it. And uh, I, so and here, here's the story with that truck. A lot of people, I, I've never talked about this. And I got to be careful with what I say, but a lot of people are like, "Why are you? Why are you guys not working on that truck?" And they like, I don't know if you, I don't know how much you watch a Gen Two, but I have the step side that I yeah. bought, and it's a complete. You've rusted, been doing a great job fixing stuff, right? It's it was a complete rust bucket Ohio truck, as like two hundred thousand miles. But I purposely bought a shitty truck so I could, I wouldn't have to be scared about working on it. Like it's already junk. Like I can. Yeah, we, I can mess we something can only up. go up from here. Yeah, like my S10 after it got restored was like super like it was really nice, super truck. nice truck. And uh, I want to thank Corey Brandon, he's the one that painted it. Um, which he hasn't raced in a while. I hope he gets his car back out, that dude. But um, he actually painted that truck for me. Um, after my best friend passed away, he did that for me. So you know, I'll never be able to repay him for that. Like, what a good dude, he just That's did awesome. it. He just did it. Like I didn't I didn't even know him. He just he's like, Hey, I want to paint your truck. And he did it for me. And it is it made me very happy and it got me into, you know, racing and it's just, it was a big part of it. But anyway, so I bought the step side because I'm not good at wrenching and I'm still learning. And I bought that thing. I bought a rusty truck on purpose so I could teach myself because I was always scared to work on my S ten because it was so nice. So I got that the, the step side, and I've been re- full restoration, pretty much almost a cab off restoration. Um, about two years ago, me and Allison uh, got a house to rent, and it came with that shop that I've been building it out of. And uh, my dad's going to hate this, but I remember we were moving into the new house one night, and I was showing him the garage, and... I was so excited to go start buying tools and uh, buying my own, all this stuff. And uh, he was like, I don't know why you're getting all this stuff. You're just going to be doing oil changes. I was like, <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> it pissed me off so well, bad. Maybe he said it to motivate you. Yeah. I don't know. But he said, <laughs> I, don't know why you're, I don't know why you're buying all this stuff. You're just going to be doing oil changes. I said, it, it lit a fire under my ass. Yeah, and I was like, I'm gonna show them I, I can work on shit. Like, and a lot of the problem was is when we were building my S10, uh, a lot like I think we wanted to just get get me racing. Yeah, like, there wasn't a lot of time where there was like teaching moments where we could slow down and let me let me show you how to do this. Like when we were building it and swat getting the had a 2.8 in it when I drove it to high school and. You know, then it got restored, and then we were ready to put a small block in it, and we we built an engine for it, and um, but there just wasn't a lot of time or patience where we slowed down, and I got to learn much. And you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not trying to like be mean or nothing. It's just it's just what it it is what it was, and I didn't get to learn much, so. But I did get to start racing very early, and I was right into the truck, and I got really good at driving fast. Like some people are, I I don't know. I feel like me and my brother are almost like it's one of our talents. Like we yeah. we were, he they threw me in it, and I was automatically good at driving somehow. Like sometimes you learn it, and sometimes you're just born with it. I feel like me and Billy. I don't mean to like blow air up my own ass or nothing, but we're pretty good at driving right out of the box somehow, and. Another thing is I started racing that truck on hard tires, which that's sketchy. Yeah. I don't think I'll ever race hard tire racing again (laughs) because the first time we tried to, we like I was just racing it on motor and I won a few street races in Columbus and then we were ready to put some spray on it. Well, the spray was coming on at like the 60 foot cone or like, you know, 100 feet out. And as soon as it would come on, it would just dart towards the guardrail or whatever. And it was, I think that's what made me pretty good at driving was starting out in hard tire. But it, there was a couple of times, I remember one night we were out testing our test spot and it got loose around 300 feet when the nitrous came on and I almost put it in the ditch, my truck. And we got back and I was like, damn, that was pretty crazy, guys. And they're like, yeah, you're done on hard tires. 
we're cutting slicks on it. It's like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I can't blame you, but. Well, what so what? As to now, you, are you gonna fit? You're gonna finish your, your right. You so, finish your truck and then maybe start on that. I guess. Yeah, um, I just I think the whole step side thing is I wanted to prove to everybody that I could work on stuff, and I wanted to prove my dad wrong. And of course, it's another reason I'm putting an LS in it because I want to beat his Malibu because it's got a small block in it, and he's always. We were originally going to put a 380 or a, a 383 stroker in it, and then um, Gorin, uh, one of our racing buddies, uh, he was like, "Hey, I got this LC9. It's somebody put a, put a, a non VVT cam in it and tore it all up, and it's just I was going to trade in as a core or whatever. I was like, you can come have it. So he gave me this engine for free." And LC nines are pretty gangster. Like, yeah, that's what Jonathan Capizzi. Uh, he was breaking records with that thing. I'm like, shoot, <laughs> yeah, like, I yeah. want this. I got a race engine. <laughs> yeah, I got a race engine right right out of the box. So you know, I wanted that, and especially since they're aluminum, it's a big heavy truck. I'm like, I'm trying to get all the weight off the nose of this thing. So then I was like, well, I'm going that last route, and then that's when I got kicked out of the driveway. <laughs> around that time, I was I was working on my step side in the driveway for the longest time. And then we started renting that house, and I moved into the garage, and that's when, oh, I was I was so excited to finally have my own spot, my own tools. Oh, it was great, and uh, it's still sitting in that garage. We've recently moved, you know. We're me and Allison are like figuring figuring out the adult life now. Like it's cool. we we just moved into a new place, um, a lot cheaper. It's getting expensive to live anymore nowadays, but. We're renting a new place. So I'm trying to get my stuff out of this old garage and move it to a new garage. So I've been in a little bit of a halt working on it. And, um, you know, it just the SRC stuff takes up a lot of the time. And But hopefully I can get the step side done for this season. And it'll be another, you know, street car build. And me and Alice can hopefully go cruising. She can be in her dart and me in the step side. And it'll that's be cool. fun. So that's the goal. That is cool, man. So now with you guys, with the new shop, kind of the goal is to be able to to film co- all your SRC content there, just kind of have everything in one spot. That way you're not having to jump around as much. Yeah. Um, we still have a, a side shop um, that Billy built. The, the one that Billy built the Nova out of, we still have that shop. And that's probably where I'll move the step side because I'm too stubborn. I don't want their help because I want to finish it myself. <laughs> but yeah, that's the plan. We moved my S10 to the new shop, though. And okay. Our, yeah, I thought I'd seen it. Yeah. 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 So we'll get on it soon, I'm sure. Um, but yeah, I, I just I fell in love with the step side because I felt like it was more of my own thing, and I was choosing what I wanted to do with it, and I was working on it myself. I didn't get any rewarding feeling of racing my my S10. Yeah. Because I just didn't really feel like. You put a lot of effort into yeah, it. Yeah. No, I can relate with that, man. Like I, when I uh my wife and I, we got married, I was twenty two, and um like my dad my dad lives right down the street from here, but like he's got an oversized garage and like that's his race cars in there and his Corvette and stuff. And I uh I didn't have any space in that garage, like that was his. And I had dirt bike stuff, so I kept it in the basement. Well, as soon as Tara and I got our, our first place where we were living, it had a really big excuse me, had a really big garage. And that's when I built my first car and I was all by myself. I had, I like, I had a place of my own to work. It was, it felt like, it just felt so good. You know, it was awesome. And I remember like taking that car down the street for the first time and I was learning to tune. It was on HP tuner back then. We didn't have, you know, back in the stone age, we didn't have Terminator. Yeah. We didn't have any of that. So it had a stock ECU and, and I was using HP tuner and, you know, I'm driving it down the road and, uh, trying to figure out how to get the fuel enrichment right and all mm-hmm. this stuff. I'm like, man, it was so rewarding, though, because, you know, just did it with me and my buddies. It was mm-hmm. awesome. That's another thing. I can't wait. Like, I got a Terminator for my truck, and I figured out the power management side of tuning and putting up a tune-up, and I want to go this number. I figured that out. Yeah. Um, but I don't know how to do the whole fueling stuff and, like, getting a car to start up for the first time on EFI. So... That's what I'm really excited for with my step side as well is because I'm going to learn that side of it. And I'm not scared of hurting anything. Like, it's all my own stuff. I'm not worried about breaking. Like, obviously, the Falcon, that's 
it's Billy's car. It's in his name. He says it's mine. It's, it's Billy's car. It's Billy's engine. Like, so that's why that's another thing. It's more, I'm always scared of like, I was originally scared of getting in the Falcon just because it was his technically. And I want to feel like I'm racing my car and breaking my own stuff and I break it and I buy it. But yeah, well, know. that makes goes, me feel spoiled. That goes back to the team thing though, man, is like, it's, you know, like, like Charlie, like, like, me, Heath, and Brad all own Charlie, which is rad because, like, Brad and I have raced before on our own and, you know, done it that way. Our white car was just Brad and I's. Um, but, man, having more people to help and contribute, like, dude, this stuff's expensive and it is a lot of work. And, mm -hmm. you know, just having another person that's on board with you just to go do whatever is, man, it's – I w more people really do need that, you know, need to not worry who na whose name's on the side of the car and just, you know, we're here to have a good time and try to win. Like, how do we assemble a team to do that, yeah. you know? I want to give Allison a bunch of credit because I've, I've told her, I was like, if, if we ever for some reason break up, and I, I don't think we ever will, I think we're going to get married probably. I don't know when. It's, we're not ready yet because yeah. everything's just so hectic, but, like, I don't know who else I'd spend the rest of my life with. Ah, you should marry her. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, we will. <laughs> we will. I just, but like, if, go if, to we, Vegas, if get something Elvis. happens and we break up, I'm not getting another girlfriend because I'm, I'm not, not going to do one yet. Dude, I have I, all this time invested in this girlfriend. Yeah. I mean, I didn't. <laughs> yeah, I'm not getting another one. Like, I'm not going through the whole breaking th breaking her end stage of like, well, this is the wife. Like, you're gonna have to come street racing with us. And well, I, I don't know. Like, our chemistry just works. You guys and are a great couple, man. She's she's. I really don't awesome. think it. W I don't think I would be able to enjoy or do what I'm doing without her. You know, giving me the okay and supporting it in every aspect. You know. Yeah. Taking on the filming and just all of it. Like, I wouldn't be able to do with it do it with anybody else yeah so, that's yeah. great I mean, she, i'm she, riding it out with her like, yeah, yeah. yeah if she don't work out we're not getting to do it yeah that's it yeah. <laughs> yeah that's the goal that's cool well you know if you want to i'm ordained man if you ever you know you ever feel like getting married at the racetrack <laughs> we can knock it out <laughs> she says i'm not allowed to propose to her like everybody does she calls them cheesy, I guess. But like when people, oh, something's broke on the starting line. We gotta get out and look underneath the car. Oh, here's a ring. Like she's begging me not to do it in public. So <laughs> I would totally. I you know, um, yeah. I, when I asked my wife to marry me, it was a very private setting, and it was really awesome. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you, you, yeah. Do something that's totally not even related to cars. That's another thing too is um, keeping the YouTube life private. Um, it's been getting tough. Um, my dad's channel is like everything gets put on there. Yeah, like, he's kind of got a different oh, format. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, like you can't – like I remember this earlier on. He doesn't put stuff like this on the channel still, but like Billy was taking a shit one day. Dad just walks in with the camera. What are you doing? Just like <laughs> – just puts everything on the YouTube. Yeah, we, so you, yeah. we had to be careful because he was just putting everything on there. And I like when we originally started with his channel, I was still I was actually working with him doing drainage work. And you know, we would vlog us just working, digging ditches and stuff, and then now you see what it is and it's awesome to see what he's done, just filming on, on his phone and editing on his phone and but I worry because it's like it takes up every ounce of his time now. He yeah. he doesn't vacation, he doesn't he can't. People yeah. are always depending on the next video, and I, I got to be careful because you know I love all of our fans, and we wouldn't be able to do anything that we're doing without them. They keep the engine running, yeah, without them watching. Yeah, they're the gas. Yeah, but sometimes people think they're owed. Like, you you guys need to get this video out. Like, I don't know, and it's frustrating because, like, for the the New Orleans video, for example. I don't. Th I think people forget that we have to. Like, I'm the one actually editing the videos. Like, I just got done racing, and now we got to drive all the way home. I got to download all the footage, get all the, I gotta get all the cameras out, download all the footage, and we've got. I whenever I get done a racing event, I probably have like 15 folders for you know five five or six GoPros, multiple cameras, drone footage, phone footage, everything, and. People think that it's just, I don't know, like, 
people think they get mad if we don't upload before everyone else. Like, oh, well, we already seen this. Somebody's already uploaded this. You're you're slacking. I'm like, <laughs> dude, my first round pass is already uploaded before I even got out of the car to pack the parachute. Yeah, people are like, there's a difference between quality and quantity. And- yeah, I was gonna say I wouldn't stress that too much because uh, you guys are still pretty on it and the quality speaks for itself yeah. it's different than what uh someone's putting out yeah. that same night or next day so. well and i think uh, i i didn't you know with you know obviously you know we ricky we got you know ricky does all of our stuff and and you know he's phenomenal at it but like we had another dude before rick that tried to do it and he was a mess and like it his he just wasn't organized right so like watching ricky like and I'm sure you do. It sounds like you do the same thing. You, you're both. You're trying to organize your stuff so that when you get where you are editing, you know what fo- folder. I remember me and Rick pulling up one of his old folders, like trying to find something. It would mean it was a mess. Mm-hmm. Um, but I didn't. Not my folder. It the, wasn't the, the previous folder, media the pre- guy. Previous, yeah. But until like, like I'm not a hundred percent hands on with Ricky, but like you know, I see him work and know what he does. Um, man, I, I people just don't realize the amount of work that it takes to get from raw media to, you know, it's different if you're just taking a cell phone clip and you're, you're not editing anything. You're just, this is, I started here, stopped it here. Boom. It's out in the world. And if that's what somebody wants to do, go for it. Yeah. But yeah, we, we, we ran into a lot of trouble this season. Uh, I mean, in the last, the last two years, people make a channel and then they continuously like use our car on the th- or they make our thumbnails or make their thumbnails look like ours and like and then our our it, it ends up on our subscribers feeds and then they watch it and then they're like oh well I don't even want to watch SRC's video because I already saw that you lost fourth round or you won the event or whatever so it's tough and I but I also will not sacrifice quality trying to rush something out yeah yeah so. It's it's been a it's been a fine line of of that 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 war, <laughs> but well, yeah. and I think within you know within drag racing, like it it, I guess it's gotten a lot easier to do the YouTube stuff. You know, your phone is obviously more than capable to do. You mm-hmm. can, I mean, your dad's proof of that. You can run a whole channel off your phone, um, and I and I think you know it's just. All around, it's easier to do it. People are seeing more people do it, so they're they're more apt that they want to go try it. Um, and I don't know, man. With drag racing, Ricky and I talk about this a lot. It's like it's actually a pretty small little niche of the world, right? Like mm-hmm. it's 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 funny to me. Like you know, uh, people are trying to steal whatever from people, not steal, but you know, we're sharing these collective group of people to watch these videos. And really, in the scheme of the world, it's a pretty small group. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, I don't, it's, I don't know. It's really interesting. The YouTube stuff's funny, dude. It, mm-hmm. I was really uneducated on what it would take until I've watched Ricky work on it, you know? Yeah. I think what I've learned is all the people that comment saying, you know, and there's a whole other thing is I try. The, the sucky thing about YouTube comments or just comments in general is, you can't ignore them because then you don't get to read the good ones. And there's a lot of good ones out there. There's yeah, people yeah. that comment about, man, your video made my day. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, you know, I'm sitting in the hospital today with a loved one, and I had turned on your video, and it made me forget about everything for 30 minutes. And I like, there's comments like that out there, and that fuels me to keep doing what we're doing. But then, you know, like I said, you can't ignore them because you know, and, there, and then you can't ignore the bad comments, like. People say nasty shit online, and you know you just gotta shrug it off. For for a long time, I was really letting it get to me, um, like comments saying, "Why are my hands never dirty?" or shit like that. And yeah, I just learned that people are just jealous most of the time, or just they are too they're miserable and they want to make you miserable. Yeah, and you know it is what it is, and we just gotta keep doing what I love to do. So it's just like the great Joe Dirt said, bud, you <laughs> just gotta keep on keeping on. Yeah. <laughs> And, and I think, too, the other thing for you, which, you know, you're a feeler, right? Like, you're a person that you feel really deeply, right, which is a great quality. And I struggle, actually, with the exact same thing. I'm just um, a little older now, so – and I've, I've I've really – I've tried to train my brain. But – and I do, back to having Ricky, like, 
Ricky knows that I'm sensitive about that stuff. So a lot of times he deletes the stuff mm-hmm. before, I a a yeah, before I even see it, you know, because yeah. he know, he does know he he's really great at it. Don't bother. I don't think it bothers. Not me. at all. <laughs> so he he knows that that's a weak thing of you mine. Just so. let him start replying. Yeah, he does. <laughs> no, that. I am. I'm usually. Yeah, the he's one. normally yeah. the one replying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you get a reply on YouTube, you, at least, yeah, yeah, it's it it yeah. Normally, it's every once in a while I'll reply or like. Sometimes they'll give me crap because I will decide like I'm feeling spicy that day and I'll reply something and mm-hmm. then like I'll think about it and I'll like go back like 15 minutes later. Jason likes to backpedal. I'm yeah. Like if we're gonna commit, we if we're gonna yeah, go we're in, we gotta there, commit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think I think the thing that bugs me is if I see somebody make a comment that they have the wrong idea about me. Like if they think I'm a I'm a, I'm a, I'm a mean person just in general. Yeah. That's what I'll call it. If they think I'm a mean or nasty person, like that really bothers me. Like, I don't want somebody to think I'm that way. Yeah. And it, it was keeping me up at night that th- there's somebody out there that thinks I'm like a spoiled brat or something. Like I don't want people to think I'm that way or nothing. And it always just bugged me. But I learned that there's nothing I can do about it. People are going to think what they think. And honestly, if they think that way, screw them. They don't have to watch the videos. Either yeah. way, if you're watching them, you're helping me anyway. The, the funny haters. thing is, most of the time they will continue to watch and so so it's yeah. you know yeah it's their their own little battle they're suffering with. So <laughs> yeah, don't take right. it personal. Yeah. yeah. Well, and the the longer that I'm on the earth, the one thing that I really I really rest in is, you know, I mean, I don't really care what the world thinks of me. What I do care about is the people that I interact with daily and the people that I rub shoulders with. You know, my kids. You know, and then people that we work with and people that are actually invested in my life, right? Those people, those are the people that I care what they think about me because they're a good judge of, of my character. True character. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and like that, you know, I want to be for me personally, it's like, I want to be the same person when this camera's on as I am at my house when I, nobody's around and nobody's mm-hmm. looking at me. I want to try to be even through my whole life, yeah. right? And the rest of it just really doesn't matter because people are just getting this quick little snippet of, yeah. of something, right? Yeah. And I think the thing that I, you know, that I think about a lot is different platforms in life. Like, you got a really good hold of, like, you can do something great with your, your platform, right? Encouraging those people that are going through a hard time that are whatever. Like, man, I, I think life... In that way, it's kind of simple. Like, we're either turning the lights on or we're turning them off. And I always want to be on the side of where we're turning them on, mm-hmm. right? And I want to fill, try to fill people up, right? Because yeah. the world's dark enough, man. Let's turn some lights on. Yeah. It's unfortunate. Like, a lot of the news outlets, they're usually reporting negative shit. But unfortunately, that's what gets... That's what gets people to click on it. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's just the way the world works. It's hard to, it's hard to be positive and and make something of it. Sometimes people just live for the negative shit, and it it sucks. But luckily, we have found this niche of people that really like my family, at least most of them, <laughs> yeah. and they enjoy watching our bullshit. Thank God, and you know, it, it's we've got a good subscriber base that. They watch through the whole video, no matter what it is. Like, no, that's what? awesome. I said to your brother, like, uh, you know, we've had a slow grow, um, but I've enjoyed the ride of it. But uh, uh, I feel like we almost have a cheat code, not a cheat code, but we have a business that buffers. You guys have had, and not that we don't share our personal lives. You know, this is like Jason said, this is our authentic selves. Mm-hmm. But we have Tin Soldier. Like I have that, you guys like have to bring, or not have to, but you've built your thing on like bringing it into your home, into your daily lives. Mm-hmm. Like that would be, but you guys do an awesome job with it. Like, and it, it has become a thing where you've built like this organic yeah. raw uh, group of people that are ride or die for you. It's gnarly to see. I mean, anytime we post a video, there's a, a good chance that like, there's a comment about Street Race Channel in it. You know, like Street Race Channel sent me here or when are you going to do awesome. another? You know, that's like, what I hope for. We, we have, you, you yeah, guys, you guys lot, have yeah. an awesome, like, you know, core group following and it's that's, really cool to see. That's the thing see. is I never gatekeep. If there's any other videographers or uh, or photographers out there, they message me. I I never gatekeep secrets no, or yeah. 
how to use a camera, or can't what camera settings I use or anything, and I'm still learning too. But I never gatekeep anything, and I want everyone to be successful. Um, yeah, there's plenty of room for all of us in this, and 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 I'll I'll tip my hat to you, your brother, and your your father, like me coming in this you know i've been in media for a long time but this youtube thing like it's a whole new ball like that's a new game for us um and you guys have been real gracious from the start just like like hey this is how you can do this this is you know giving us pointers and it's been really rad yeah i i want to help everybody and you know um like we just did this podcast on our channel with luke glass and he's starting his youtube channel and and like I'm like, dude, I'm gonna get you to a thousand subs or whatever. Like we're gonna get you going. Or like even when we had uh, Ryan Mitchell on, um, we're like, I can't remember what subscribers they were at, but we want to get to this point by Christmas. And I said, no, we're gonna get you to this by Christmas. That's yeah. Cool. And I think they end up hitting. I can't remember how much it was. If it was, I think we got them a few thousand subs. But that's that's always my goal is I want to help everybody. And, you know, there's no gatekeeping and there's when, definitely room for everybody. When we, uh, before we were recording, I, I kind of like that idea you were talking about, like, um, with this most recent raffle you guys did, uh, we spoke about the the guy that in North Carolina that got it. Mm-hmm. And like, now he has a YouTube channel that, yeah. I don't know if it was previously, but, um, like you guys are kind of like birthing new little yeah. YouTube ch- and it, that's, that's super rad. Like it's yeah. so important. I got to talk with, um, what's, uh, our boy from G2K, uh, Victor, oh, Victor, 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 Victor. Um, he's awesome. Super I like, like that guy. We just he's talked so about nice like, me, dude. I mean, and, and, you know, I've been, I, I know I've been just kind of sitting here not talking, but why, uh, I, I was looking forward to having you on, like our role, you know, I say our, like not in any kind of superiority thing, like, no, no. but our role as video people sharing this in this scene, it's, it's so important because of those messages of people that don't get to go out to the track every weekend. Like we're sharing that. And, you know, you guys are entertainment. We are entertainment. We're education, um, to people that maybe wouldn't have access to this in any other sure. way. Like, um, and Jason has always been great from the start, like knowing that, like, mm-hmm. like, that this is important. Your brother obviously saw it early on with, with his vision of where it could go. Yeah. Um, so it's just been really rad to now go on this journey, but like you guys help us out along the way and everybody yeah. kind of help each other out along the way. Like it's, yeah. it's been cool. It's a cool community of people for sure. In this, I, I, I try to credit the ones that really deserve it. Um, like, yeah, I don't want to, I don't want to bash anybody, but there's like the channels out there that purposely, like it, it's like there's a new one every week that just they're only posting crashes or something or like yeah. they're just trying to get views. They don't have their like my my biggest advice for any of these channels out there that are trying to get bigger is set yourself apart from all the other channels that are all filming the same race. Yeah. But nobody knows the face behind the camera like. I feel like you know, Victor's doing a good job, but I was like, dude, like he he told me one time he has race cars. Like, I'm like, dude, why don't you start filming yeah. yourself working on the cars or yeah. shit, put it on the camera, come out and race sometime. Like, I don't, I, but some, I don't know. I just, I don't know. I, it's, I think every channel has to have a face behind it or it's just going to be another channel that like, there's already a 1320 out there doing race coverages or whatever. But no, I, people want connection. They yeah, want to feel connection connected and to that's, that. that's why, you know, we, we got this, it's almost like a, a TV show. Our, our channel, like all the shop videos, like you're in the shop and it's almost like everyone that always shows up there is always, dude, it's so crazy to see it in person. It's so weird. Like I, I watched on video and I, I know where everything is. I've never been here. Yeah. So I don't know. I'll <laughs> never, for, I'll <laughs> never funny. forget when we were in the old shop. Um, and you know, we are all very fortunate to, I have my own room here, you know, like, uh, and not to say that I was in, in the groundwork of 10 soldier, but at our previous shop, me, Jason, Brad, Tara, we all shared a space, like shipping out. Like that's like where I was on media, <laughs> yeah. but I'll never forget. Like, uh, and I had only been doing the, the video. I'd only been with 10 soldier for a, a couple months. Uh, a gentleman walked in and, uh, you know, I was sitting right at the front door. So, uh, I'm on my computer editing. I look up and he just like, in awe, like looking around. I was like, what's up, man? Can I help you? He's like, this is the place. (laughs) This is where it all happens. Like I've watched your videos and I was like, man, that's crazy. We were small. You know, we're still relatively small. We had like maybe 
1500 subscribers <laughs> and he was one of them and he was like 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 it, it was like on a hollywood movie set i was like man this is this is cool like it is cool it, youtube's just a i don't want to go down the nerdy geeky road but like I, I say it to you know jason all the time and again to his credit he sees the vision of like youtube is so impactful and so it's big special. like it, it, it is the new television it's, it's what people go to yeah completely like. yeah, completely it's what and it used to be you know the younger but like even just today having a conversation with todd his grandparents are coming down a couple weeks mm -hmm. he's like they want they're being brought here because his grandfather watches all of our youtube videos That's and cool. wants to see the place like so it's not just the younger generation mm -hmm. like it's the older it's in, in between like mm -hmm. it's like yeah. it's so it's cool that w w we're providing uh you know an entertainment an education whatever it is for people to escape like yeah. it's important it's my um i was at my parents house the other day and they got a new tv uh and my dad's 81 and my mom's 76 um and uh, my dad, I'm trying to help him set up all the stuff. And, and he was like, man, I don't care if any of this other stuff works. Just make sure I can get on YouTube. <laughs> you know, and it's like, man, that's crazy. Because it's, it, we, you know, we actually, a couple years ago, uh, when we raced the Bad Penny, when we raced Ultra Street, um, we, we did all the NMCA races and we were actually getting filmed by a film crew. So they were... They were trying – they filmed the whole season of, of whatever they were going to call this show, but they filmed the whole season. So we were mic'd up all season, you know, dealt with uh, with an actual, uh, you know, what do you call that guy? Producer. Uh, producer, and, you know, we had script – the whole deal, right, whole gamut. And what's interesting is that's actually what really sparked us to do the YouTube stuff because I was like, well, man, if we're interesting enough that these people are literally – they've paid to – false around for a year to try to pitch this show to motor trend or whoever they were i don't even know like man we need to do this on your own our own because we need to cut out the middleman right and like that's really all youtube is it's like you're cutting out the middleman and then everybody can watch exactly what they want to watch and and i do think that i i think it is an evergreen thing like i don't i don't see it i don't really see it having a downturn you know, like I, I really don't. I, I don't know. It's it's kind of a wild nah, thing. It's just it's gonna be a non stop growth thing, so Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what would happen if it ever went away. I don't know what the heck we'd do. I'd break it back to digging ditches or something. I don't know. I don't, I don't see that out happen. With us, but yeah, yeah, it'll be all right. I but, don't see that happen. No, I, I don't either. I think I've always wondered though, like if YouTube for some reason goes away, first of all, I'll be really sad because only about half of our videos, basically when I started coming around, is on a hard drive somewhere safe. Uh, Everything before that is like, I don't know where it is. Like, it's in mixed together in some of Billy's old hard drives. Some VHS but, tapes. Yeah. Right. Man. Yeah, who knows? You but. know, outside of just the making a living off of it, monetizing, you know, making money, last week, I shared this at lunch. I don't think you were there that day. I caught my, I was bawling my eyes out. Uh, there's a guy that I've followed for a long time that does um, reptile stuff. I'm really into animals. I uh, think I know you're about to say. His video, he was monetized. It was a big channel. But, man, it hit me the importance that just having things documented. This man, Jason, was saying goodbye on his hospice bed. Like, he knew it was his last video. Um and he has millions of subscri subscribers. They followed him in this journey. But he was saying goodbye for the last time. And it was such a beautiful thing. And I was like, man, his family has this forever. You know, like, yeah. and his fans and his friends yeah. and family have this forever. And I was like, dude, I need to start making my own YouTube videos. I don't care about, like, getting subscribed just to be documented forever. You know, yeah. like, everything that we've ever made. Brixton will have for the rest of his life. When we're no longer here, he'll be able to watch his dad. Like that's crazy. Like that's a that's an important no, I, thing. Man, I think about that a lot. You know, especially with my dad. Um, my dad, you know, being eighty one, and you know, like that. You know, such is life, right? Life will always move and go forward. And you know, um, my kids, Brixton is, you know, he's getting ready to turn three, and you know, it, it, like having all this stuff documented for Brixton and Zaya and Emmy and like is so rad you yeah, know, to go back. Yeah. So I've got two sides of this and it, it is crazy because, you know, I'm an uncle now. Uh, yeah, you, you are. Billy and Molly just have Wyatt, which is, you know, it's crazy. It, <laughs> it, 
it's like how where what happened yeah well we know. can you know i mean we need to talk <laughs> i about think it. Like, <laughs> a general <laughs> idea of what happened. No, i just mean like my brother he's he's 20 he's almost 30 he's 27 yeah i'm just like this is crazy yeah, how yeah. Do we do, yeah. yeah it's, life yeah it flies by but it's exciting because we're gonna Wyatt is really gonna have like his own life documentary <laughs> like, yeah he's gonna be able to watch and and even before he was born, he's going to be able to like you know I don't have videos of my parents when they were teenagers yeah. hanging out, like that's what we have now. Like it's just going to be crazy. He'll always be able to go back and be like, "This is what my dad was and my uncle Tommy. Yeah. This is what they were like when yeah. they were." Yeah, I think that's it's so, so cool. cool. Super crazy to think it's about. It's like Back to the Future. <laughs> but he, so here's my other side of this though, is I so when I started filming for Billy, I had filmed for about two two or maybe three years before I started racing. But I had never watched one of his passes with my own eyes for three years. I always filmed it. Yeah. I never actually watched it with yeah. my own eyes. And you, I think you can get lost really quick, the special moments in your life. Oh, for sure. If, if, you're, too, like, if you're too busy filming it and you don't actually watch it with your eyes, it's, like, it's different. Because yeah. the memory in your head of, of what that – of what that memory was is what was on your camera when you're filming it or whatever. Yeah. So it's different. If you actually watch it with your eyes, that's what you remember and you're in the moment. So yeah, it's when, hard. When you are filming it, it is almost like you're you're capturing this moment and memory for others to enjoy and yeah. have forever, but it does alter your uh you know yeah. your place and time. You miss in that out moment. as a cameraman. You, you do. do, yeah. I, I got to learn kind of early on, you know, because I come from skateboarding. That's what, where you know I got my start, and um, you still have to be pretty in the moment to capture it. Um, but obviously, it's not the same as doing it. Mm -hmm. But uh, I caught that really quickly. Uh, I got to try. I was super fortunate to travel the world with a family, and uh, I remember before I took off, like having a, a cool conversation. Um, with someone I'm close with and they're like, you know, don't forget to like take this in yourself. Like don't just be present and behind the camera. Like, so I always like kind of checked myself in that and I'm yeah. super glad that I did. Cause you know, it, I have these beautiful videos to look mm -hmm. back on of this amazing, but like, I always reminded myself to like sit in the moment. And yeah, it's hard to do at a race cause it's so fast paced, right. yeah, yeah. but, but yeah, I get with that. But a lot of the channels like, you think about Roman Atwood. Have you ever watched him? So he is like he lives like ten or fifteen minutes away from where we live in Hebron, and uh, he's a pretty much just a vlogger. He used to do pranks back when he was a little younger, and uh, but now he's got a big family, a bunch of kids, and um, he he vlogged every day. He uploaded every day, and uh, he, you know he's got a wife and a really beautiful family, but he burned himself out on it. And, you know, after four or five years of not missing a single upload every day, he finally had to tell everybody, like, you know, we I can't keep doing this. No, it's, it's like, not it's, sustainable. It's damaging. Not, yeah. It was damaging his his family life. Like, with how much t time and effort I put into the racing and the camera stuff, me and Allison have gotten in fights about stuff. Like, or if I want to go spend some time working on my, my truck, like, there's no time for date nights. You know, yeah, there's a lot of sacrifices and, Definitely. you know, it's it's tough to balance everything out. And that's that's what I've tried to talk to a lot with a lot of the people that I've uh, done podcasts with on, on mine is a lot of them have families and they're not, you know, the top 10 fastest small tire in, in the country or nothing like they're balancing everything out. They got a normal job and I don't know how I don't know how they do it. I mean, it's I give credit to all of them. You know, it's it's crazy. It's a lot to it, it is a lot to to balance on the 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 family side of stuff. I mean, we had a, kind of a conversation about that, but the but the one thing that I know that Brad does, and I didn't know that he did this until we talked about it. I don't know, maybe maybe a couple months ago. But so Brad, you know, obviously he videos most passes just to see what the car's doing, and uh, he told me that he stopped videoing the car in eliminations. Because he just wanted to be present. He's like, I know what the car's going to do. He's like, if it does something stupid, whatever. He's like, I would rather be there for the moment. And I'm like, man, that's such a powerful thing, you know. And, like, even Rick, like, I tell him, like, you know, if we're in the finals, I don't really care what that video looks like. I'd rather you be 
a part of what's happening than us have a great shot of it. Because mm-hmm. that's well, super nice of you. Well, it's like we already had great shots all day, I'm sure. Right. So if the camera goes flying and whatever happens, like, I don't care, dude. He's part of your team and he, he's eating just as much as everyone else. Like, Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I, re- I really respect that you do that for him. That's awesome. Well, like, he does, like, he, you know, Ricky's not, his background's not race cars. We just, me and him are just homies. We love each other. Yeah. Right. So he just gets hyped because we're doing it all together. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah, the footage is whatever, man. It's it, the memory of of it all, and like you said, the memory in your head is like a totally different thing, you know. And I, and as a, and you can probably relate to this as a driver. Like that's the one thing I don't like about driving the race car, is like, ah, uh, you know, Brad's really great. Like people in the in the no prep stuff, sometimes they give us crap about that with Brad and Heath wear radios, right? I'll tell you the most beautiful thing about that radio is. When I'm going through the finish line and I'm in front of that dude, Brad Brad is not a vocal person, but he is on that button and he is screaming. <laughs> can you you got you can hear him? Oh from the yeah, line? it's awesome. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> so then it like it helps me connect to the guys on the starting line because like you know, dude, they're all pumped when they get to me, right? Like we do the push car thing, right? We're you know whatever we do the push car thing. So when the push car gets to me, they're still stoked, right? That's awesome. but it's not that. Like it's so much different than being on the starting line, you know, yeah. and and I love that's one of the things I do love about the video is normally the start the the last race video is normally not that great, but I can hear everybody yelling mm-hmm. and Ricky does pan and get the people. And you know, what? I, think, I love that. I think that adds to it for the people that are watching that are I also too. excited. They also feel like they're a part of that. Yeah, it's really special. Yeah, that's one of the greatest moments in drag racing. It's like, that's why, like, drag racing is so rad. Is like, you know, if you think about a uh, circle track race or an indie car race, it's like, it's these this whole moment that takes so long, right? And there's moments within moments to get to that final moment, but it takes forever. Drag racing is like four seconds, it, or sometimes less if you red light, right? It's, it's, it's uh, the, the joy is so immediate. Which, that's kind of like un- unlike anything mm-hmm. else. You know, it's it's that part's pretty beautiful. It's like ninety percent of the race is just getting to the, the the stage bulbs. Exactly. Yeah. And then the rest of it is you know just get getting to the state getting to the starting line is the hardest part. Yeah. Sometimes. Go a little longer. This is officially our longest podcast. Yeah, it's been a great conversation. Yeah. I no, could talk I, for four more hours. I swear I could. No, it's awesome. You got any closing thoughts before we mm-hmm. wrap it up? Uh, I just want to thank everybody, I guess, you know, thank all of our subscribers that keep the keep the wind in the sails. And I, I thank my brother. Um, you know, he's if it wasn't for him, we wouldn't have any of what we have. And if he didn't give me that talk that one night, you know, I, I don't know what I'd be doing. Um, my mom, she doesn't get enough credit ever. Well, Miss Vicky's the best, um, yeah. man. She's everybody says it, but she's she's the best mom in the world. Everyone's mom is the best mom in the world, but mine's mine's the best <laughs> mom in the world. But and my dad for keeping me keeping me hard, yeah. I guess. <laughs> you know, I, if I didn't have my brother and my dad, you know, I don't I don't know. I'd be soft, I guess. But yeah, you're still soft though, which is great. Like like that's a it's a beautiful quality. I think that you know that people, you know the old school mentality of men is like ah be hard. You know like yeah screw that man be gushy on the inside. It's awesome. Like experience life, have empathy for others. Like yeah, that's a great way to live. Yeah, you're right. right. Yeah. So and if you have a little bit of a hard outer, outer shell, that's probably not a horrible thing. But you know. Yeah. Well, my my dad deserves a lot of credit. I mean, he sacrificed a lot for. You know, him and Billy were digging ditches and doing also trying to start the YouTube at the same time. And, you know, I I joined along halfway through. Yeah. And I, I brought it to the next level, I think. You know, I'll give myself credit there. But they were the ones that, you know, worked hard to afford the first camera we ever had or afford the first laptop we ever had. Like, you know, so... 
Yeah, well, everybody makes their leap when they're ready to make the leap. And, like, that doesn't make the leap any less scary, right? Like, you mm-hmm. know, when Brad and I started this, we jumped together with our families, right, my wife, and, you know, we did all those things. And then, you know, as we've gone, we've, you know, we've added more t- people to our, our ship, right, with, with the wind and the sails. And, like, every there's, you know, people jump on and they jump off, right? Like, but the boat's still going, mm-hmm. right? And you just jumped on at the right time, mm-hmm. so... Yeah, uh, I thank all of our shop help, um, Steve Tanner. <laughs> I call him Steve. I'm sorry, <laughs> and then uh, and Big Rob. Um, they always they always make sure that my car is ready. Um, they do an awesome job, and they're always there to help if I need anything. And uh, old Uncle Bucko's doing old Uncle Bucko. Yep, yeah, he he keeps everything. He keeps everybody in line. He's a glue guy. <laughs> and uh, Allison. I never give her enough credit. Either. I mean, maybe maybe Tommy can ask her to marry her in a podcast. She didn't no. say that. <laughs> Jeez, that's no. not off limits. <laughs> no, no, she'd be so mad. Um, but yeah, I mean, I couldn't do I couldn't do any of the, any of this without her. So I'd still be the only one filming, and I wouldn't be able to race or nothing. So you know, she's sacrificing a lot, and yeah, I want to thank her dad too, uh, Jeff. Uh, he taught me a lot. Over the last two years. Um, great guy. I like that guy. Yeah, Jeff's great. And Tiffany, uh, her mom, she's always been great to me. But Jeff, um, we spent, you know, a whole off season in the shop working on Allison's dart. And I learned a lot. You know, he, he has a lot of patience. And he's taught me a lot and how to do things right and be neat and be clean and put my tools away, like doing shit the right way. So, you know, I've, I appreciate him for all the time he spent with me and Allison, and it's it's great all the relationships we got. You know, it's I'm so happy. I don't. I'm so happy. I really am. It's great. I mean, everything in life is pretty great for us. You know, there's bad days, but without bad days, you can't have good days. Or else, if everything's a good, if every day is a good day, then that'll get old. Absolutely. I guess, but you gotta have some flavors, man. You know, and and uh, you know, in life we're on this. In my mind, you know, we're on this great adventure, right? And and the people that we adventure with, that's that's what really matters the most. It, it honestly doesn't even really matter what you're doing. Like, as long as you're adventuring together and you're all, that's the best part. Yeah. I'm just hoping I'm not forgetting anybody. There's a lot of people that help, you know, keep the ship going, you know. It's... It's it really does take a team. That's like the theme of the episode. Is it takes a team. Yeah. It's yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a Yeah, and if you don't think you need a team, you're already wrong. <laughs> so And you you can't be stubborn. I think that's the biggest thing. Is we've all been stubborn and I'm stubborn about I, I never want help, but I got to, you know, I sometimes I've learned that I need help, you know. So we all do, man. Yeah. And that's and the sooner you realize that in life, the more successful you'll be. You know, it's you gotta you you just look at your weaknesses and you try to fill in those whatever you're trying to do and you see those weaknesses, well you try to fill those weaknesses in with people that are strong. Mm-hmm. And man, that works out pretty decent. So but well man, thank you for making time to come down. Like I was awesome. I've really been looking forward to having a conversation. I'm sorry, with you. I was pretty nervous the whole time, but ah, yeah, you did great. Talking about a lot of stuff I've never talked about ever before. So, well, that seems to be the theme of our podcast. Is like, it's never real. Like, it is about cars, but we try to make it a little bit more than that, right? Yeah. Like, because cars are cool, but you know, obviously we love cars, right? <laughs> but there's so much more. To it's mostly about the people driving them and tuning them and yeah, maintaining yeah. them and. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. The team. Thanks for for coming out and sitting with us, man. I know you probably have more questions. I didn't get to talk to yeah, you. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll nerd out with you another time. We, I, I would love to, um, and I appreciate Jason sitting in with us. But yeah, I would love to sit down with you and Allison, and we could just. I don't know if it'll do numbers, but we could just geek out. No, over I think it. I think that would be awesome. Just, she really wanted to come today. But yeah, I no, like, I, I would. I would love to sit down with both of you, and we can um, talk about. Yeah, I think yeah, the three. Camera, I mean, I can try to do Ricky's job, and yeah. da, 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 <laughs> it's easy. Yeah. All he does buttons. is he hit that button. It's a yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
yeah, there it is. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If, when I'm DJing, dude, you have a bunch of them. <laughs> but, dude, I, and it's so, I, it makes me happy to see you guys doing well, too. Um, you know, ever since I met Ricky the first time, you know, one, two years ago, the first time I ever talked to him, I had camera questions. And, you know, he he gave me every answer I needed, and he's super nice. And from then on, then on like, damn, he's a nice guy. And I'm just I'm glad you guys hired him. He's doing an awesome job. I appreciate it. Um, and I always I watch his I watch what he creates, and I you know I there's a little bit you you can learn a little bit from everybody. That's for sure. Definitely. Um, and he just does an awesome job, and hopefully I can do as good as a job as he does. Oh man, I do. no! I, uh, I I've told your brother, maybe I haven't told you, like when when uh, Jason first reached out to me about you know um, taking on the position, uh, you know he had given me a list of of some channels, you know, not saying like this is what I want, but like these are people that I enjoy watching and your guys' stuff, and you were doing the editing at that point, like. Is what stood out to me. So, um, like I, I told you before, you guys are kind of like the northern star. Like, you know, um, it's 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 easy to it's not easy to replicate. A lot of people try it, but uh, you guys do an amazing job, and I, I pick up stuff from you guys. So I know you say it, it means a lot, like hearing from from me because you know I've done things in this, but but really I I appreciate hearing it from you because because you've set an awesome example in this space for for what it should be. So thank you, man. You're killing it. Means well, a lot coming from you, man. Yeah, Rick knows what he's doing. <laughs> he does. He really does. Nah, I'm a YouTube University graduate as well. We're, we're just guessing, really. Yeah, yeah. I, I've I've watched a lot of YouTube. Same. A lot of YouTube, learning stuff, and not just racing. I mean, I've watched I watch all kinds of stuff, and I watch a lot of TV shows. I've been hooked on Yellowstone recently, and but the thing about it is, I have to really like a show, or else I'll just be sitting there picking it apart like man i don't like the colors on this scene or i don't like that angle or i would have put the i would have made this different like yeah i swear if the racing thing caves something happens you're going I'll probably, to cinema oh yeah i'll probably do some kind of I, i'd like to make documentaries or something something cool we could talk about that we, we maybe we could work together on something oh, yeah, i mean sick. I, if you, I mean, I'm willing to be do something out there in the wild, boys. We got Nick. Nick would come with yeah, us. Yeah, we got we got a crew of people. <laughs> yeah, but all right. Well, we appreciate you guys watching. Um, hopefully, you enjoyed this. Uh, yeah, we'll have Tommy and Allison back. Well, Allison's not here, but she is here. So, but we'll do it with with uh, with the three media people. I think that would be a great conversation. So, yeah. but we appreciate you watching. As always, like, share, subscribe. We'll see you.